each other and respect each other. We must love each other and respect each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We must love each other and support each other. Thank you all for turning out for the National Day of Action to shut shit down. Right now, we're shutting things down in solidarity with people in uh, New York, um, in South Carolina, um, all across the country. Um, so, yeah, and it's beautiful outside. So the cops are expecting us, but they have an idea of where we're going to do this action, and their idea is incorrect. Um, so that's what it is. So in order, the people. Right. in order to keep that misconception going, um, in order to move to the location where we're going to be doing the shutdown, we're going to break out into three teams. Yeah. And we're going to kind of leave scattered. Um, people who are getting arrested need to hop in cars with other people. Um, don't drive. <laughs> They have three spaces. Well, except um, we live in our car station's house. Okay. Yeah. So, we'll, we'll figure it out. So, um, the point people know the location, when we get to the location, y'all will know the location. We are doing a shutdown action, obviously. The people who are getting arrested um, are going to stay kind of linking arms, um, doing what they're doing. People who have not signed up to risk arrest, you're not getting arrested. Um, please, we're not planning to support you in that. We don't have your information. That's not been planned. Um, um, listen to the point people, if folks say like it's time to move, uh, recognize that it's time to move, it's not uh, to disrespect you or to show authority, it's to keep everyone safe. Um, so let's shut shit down.
We are here today to demand an end to white supremacy. To demand an end to white supremacy. Take your camera over here, please. Stand up, Check it out. Stand up. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
Oh, I can tell you that. I'm trying to tell you how to do it. Have a safe trip back home. Oh, come on. My name is Khalil Rodriguez. There was a call for action um, all over the U.S., all over the world. And we took the initiative of disrupting the norm normalcy, um, which is something that we did. And they were successful. I mean, we had some trials and tribulations getting to the location, as we know that uh, police always are trying to meet us with resistance. Um, my main concern is like they're meeting us with major resistance. There's a dope epidemic happening out here, and they're 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 too busy worrying about Black Lives, you know, what we're doing, and, and not worried about solving crime. So what we're doing here is we're just trying to cause awareness, have sit downs, to change up some things that need to be changed. As far as like I'm a taxpaying citizen, you're a police officer, you work for me. You police me the way I want to be policed, and I don't, I don't think that that policing has been uh, what I say hasn't been to the best. And, and when you look at the history of how policing started, how policing actually started when the slave plantations were were about, and they were trying to keep the slaves in a, in a certain area. And it, as sad as you may, it may it may sound, you, know, you look at today how Springfield is and how. They police the area to keep us contained in a certain area so we don't enter the suburbs, their, their living spaces. So we're just trying to disrupt the normalcy and stuff of that nature. So we're just, we're just proud of our comrades who've uh, risked the rest. Um, and we're just looking forward to many, many more events uh, this summer. So um, taxpaying dollars shouldn't be going to trying to stop the Black Lives Matter movement. I understand that people are chanting All Lives Matter, but the reality is that so long as black lives are not free, no lives are free. The minute that black lives become free, all lives are free. Well, the mayor came out, and uh, by the way, there was three shootings yesterday. He didn't come out to that. <laughs> but he comes out to a Black Lives Matter movement. Um, he was the one that actually called the call uh, for us to be arrested. He was in a few of us uh, faces and stuff of that nature. And it's just, it's a publicity stuff. You know, um, it's, it's, I hate to say it, sir, but you're a clown. <laughs> I, I would say that to your face, and I would, you know. I know, I'm right here. But something needs to happen, and right we need right to create change. And like I did, I, I invited him, and I invited him to, <laughs> to sit down with, with, with some of our leaders, uh, some of our black young leaders, I would say. Um, and he refused. He was just worried about today. We just, we just got a report that uh, one of our, one of, uh, one of our comrades is being mistreated, as he had a phone call. It's reported to his mom. I tried to get that addressed, and uh, they seem to be taking their oath of brotherhood to a serious extent, which is what they do. The man's remain the same as the Black Lives Matter movement all over the world. I don't think we have any extra one, um, as we know. I mean, we, want, we do want police cameras as of now. Our, our goal is to destruct the police, you know. I think our community believes that we're over-policed and under-protected. So, so the main goal is that, you know, to, to destruct something that was built on oppression and slavery. Um, so the, the goals remain the same all over the Black Lives Matter, um, but we're, we're taking smaller steps as far as like police cameras for now um, and doing other major things as well. The time is now, you know, um, silence is violence. So if you're doing nothing and you're complaining about something, silence is violence. And that's all I have to say to that. So I say, get up off your couches. I know, mine be get out of Facebook. Get out of your tweet. Like you know, like and, and so donate like, an hour uh, or two to bring an awareness. You know, and understanding that don't wait until it's your child who gets gunned down by police. Don't let the Springfield PD tell you that they have not killed anybody here because they have killed Wayne Edwards. They have killed uh, Donna Walker. So they have they have murdered some of our people here is not something that has happened in other parts of, of, of the country as they try to proclaim it's, it's happening in our own backyard so after we got arrested we all were taken to the Springfield Police Department um, where the officers who were booking us were um, one of the officers who because he is gay and came out on the force many years ago was beaten almost to death by the police and a detective who was a um, brown Latina um, woman uh, so there's all kind of entangled oppressions with the folks who were booking us but uh, yeah we were booked and then um, 
So what were you charged with? We were all charged with disorderly <laughs> conduct and resisting arrest. And resisting arrest. Ah. Resisting arrest. Yes. I also had not intended to be arrested. <laughs> yes. yes. And I was serving in a journalist capacity as a member of the media, documenting what was happening. And in fact, I had come over to the police truck to take a few photos because um, because one of the people who was being put into the truck, this officer, like he bent over and a, and a big baton fell out of his thing, out of his pocket off the ground. And I was trying to take pictures because I was like, oh my goodness. Why was I just hiding in there? And then a black officer grabbed me from behind and told me that I was under arrest. And when I tried to explain to him that I was a member of the media and was in fact walking away, he said, now you're resisting arrest. And then he put the second handcuff on me. That's when I just started chanting again. Yeah, but that whole process took hours and hours. Meanwhile, we were handcuffed either to the wall or to the bench. Yeah. And there were some people for whom, having situations like Carpal Tunnel, uh, yes. For whom that was really, really difficult. Just a little of yes. So you know, it, because it took a long time, and the cuffs were tight on some people, there was some, some difficulty for some people. Okay. And and people did to bring that to the attention of the police. Yes, and and their response was mixed. And, but well, basically, did they? Loosen the handcuffs or let people out. Um, they would. Uh, they would sometimes let people move from being um, cuffed to the wall to being cuffed to the bench. So you didn't have to stand. Um, what happened with Shay? Did they ever loosen? They didn't loosen her cuffs for sure. They did not loosen her cuffs. Uh -huh. At 11.45, I was the last person released from jail. Um, while we were in there, um, the first person who was actually booked through was a young black woman named Jocelyn. Um, she was the third to last person to be released from the jail um, cell, um, which we commented on loudly, which was very strange. While we were there, um, we were not given, none of us were given food. Um, several hours in, we were given a cup for water. Um, the cells were not clean. My cell, uh, you know, they remove your glasses when you go into jail. I almost stepped on a dirty needle because I didn't see that it was there in my cell. Um, and when they finally brought my toilet paper, I just picked it up and threw it in the toilet. Um, so, yeah, not a good situation. Um, so this morning you are all arraigned? Yes. yes. And we're going to be going to court in groups of five, so to kind of separate all of us from going in together and clogging up the court system too much, um, we're going in five at a time. But we will. We, we are asking um, for, for protesters and supporters to come out and do court support for each of the days of the groups. And when is the first court hearing? May 11th, 12th, and 13th. Yes, yeah. yeah, supporting BLN 413. Like always, I will support him with the bail. I'm a part of the media team, so that went well. Um, court today was it, was, it was, it was a good presence to, to see like all of us get up and the power of unity that they have. Everybody's looking, the judges looking, you know, the court officials are looking. Um, so it was, it, was a, it was a good turnaround, you know, to be able to feel that presence. It doesn't need to be, not need to be said, it's just, it's just felt. You know, when the group just gets up, I remember when uh, the lawyer called us and I called the group, hey, come on, everybody got up simultaneously and just the power, the energy, it was beautiful.